All right, the topic for this week, um, one of the topics for this week is graphing. And um, Kanika's textbooks, um, well, the idea is to look at the first and second derivative and, and let them tell us some stuff about a graph that we might not have known already. Um, one of the things I find with these calculus textbooks is that they forget that you can do graphing in other ways. I mean, nowadays we got graphing calculators that, goodness, you can get a pretty good idea what the graph looks like. Um, but even still, I want to remind you of some things we know about graphing without knowing any derivatives. And then we'll supplement that by the derivatives in, in uh, subsequent videos here. So uh, I want us to start off with reminding you of things like, um, well, let's not what I want. Something like this. Uh, y equals x squared minus 5x, you know, minus 6. I know this is, you know, a quadratic function. The graph is a parabola, a positive coefficient in front of x squared. It opens up, right? And I can get more information by factoring. Um, if I write it this way, x, x, what do we have here? A minus 6 and a plus 1. Yeah, so by doing this, I can very clearly see x-intercepts because when it's factored, it's easy to see when is this equal to zero. Um, and when it's equal to zero, that's when the y-coordinate is equal to zero. So what values of x give me an output of zero? That's where it crosses the x-intercept uh, and crosses the x-axis. So I can see that at x equals negative one and at x equals positive six, I have x-intercepts opening upwards. I've got a pretty good idea of what that parabola looks like. Also, things like this, if you had y equals 1 over x, denominators equaling 0 cause vertical asymptotes. Numerator, you know, when you had a 0 in the numerator, you got x-intercepts. Zeros in the denominator cause vertical asymptotes. So there's a vertical asymptote here at 0. When x is positive, 1 over x is positive but close to 0. 1 over x is positive and really big. When x is negative but close to 0, 1 over x is, is uh, negative and really far down towards minus infinity. Right? Also, this is an example here of where you have what's called a horizontal asymptote, right? because as x gets big, 1 divided by x gets really small, and this has a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. So the graph of that looks something like this. I haven't taken any derivatives. I know exactly what this looks like. I don't need to take a derivative to, to know that this is headed, you know, has a negative slope everywhere. Um, I, I just know from, from drawing the graph. Uh, I will, I will verify that when I take a derivative in subsequent videos, but for now I, I, I know what the graph of 1 over x looks like, and I know why it looks like that. Uh, next, uh, I want to take a quick look at something like this. y equals x plus 2 over x squared minus 9. Right? If I factor that denominator, x plus 2, x plus 3, x minus 3, what I see is um, several things. One is I can see x-intercepts because whenever the numerator is equal to zero, the whole fraction is equal to zero. Um, I think Arnold Schwarzenegger should make a new movie. It's called The Numerator. Annihilating functions whenever is equal to zero. Right? When, when the numerator is equal to zero, the function is equal to zero. So at x equals negative two, um, this function passes through the x-axis. I can see that from the numerator. Um, now, when uh, the denominator is equal to zero, I got vertical asymptotes. So, for instance, I can see that at negative three, there's a vertical asymptote. That's from this thing. And at x equals positive three, I've got a vertical asymptote. Okay. Next, I look back at this stage and see that with a bigger power of x in the, in the denominator than in the numerator, um, that's going to create a horizontal asymptote of zero. When x gets really big, the denominator is substantially bigger than the numerator. And when you divide numbers, when you're dividing by a bigger number, you get a small answer. So this is going to head down towards uh, zero. And I got, I've got to do a quick check. Is it heading to zero like that, or is it heading to zero like this? Um, but when x is positive here, x squared plus 2 is positive. x squared minus 9 is, well, as long as x is big enough, uh, it'll be positive. So, yeah, when x is really big, this is headed to zero, but doing it on the positive side. So it's doing like this. And this is enough for me to get a really, whoops, a really good idea of what this graph looks like. Okay. Oh, you know what? I think I forgot to mention that. But I think Arnold Schwarzenegger should 
make another movie. It's called The Denominator. Um, blowing up functions whenever is equal to zero, right? Because when the denominator is equal to zero, the function blows up close to infinity. So here we go. Um, I look at this thing and say, I've got a roadmap now of how to draw this function because I, I know exactly where it crosses the x-axis. It only does it once. Um, I know what it's doing out on the end here. Uh, and so then I just work my way backwards on this one. So it's like I got next thing I run into is a vertical asymptote. I either have to go up or I have to go down. And the thing is I don't go down because if I go down, I got to cross the x-axis. I don't have any intercepts there. So let's go up. Now, this asymptote was created by this factor right here. Right? When x is 3, that's when that's 0. When x is bigger than 3, this was a positive number. But when x is less than 3, x minus 3 is negative. These two would still be positive. If you put in like a 2.9 here, this is positive, that's positive. But this suddenly becomes negative. And so when you get to the other side of that asymptote, the function drops down to negative infinity here and starts coming up. Well, I'm looking here. The next thing I see is an x-intercept. So i got to cross right through that x-intercept and head on up. Well, and then and then there's an asymptote. And do I head up to the asymptote or do I come down? Well, I can't come down because I'd have to cross through the axis again. And I can't cross through the axis, so it goes up. Um, also, one thing I noticed is that that intercept here uh, was by this. And, and when you're bigger than negative 2, this is a positive number when you're less than negative 2, that's a negative number. Uh, this was already negative, so by the time I get down to negative, to the left side of negative 2, this factor on the numerator is negative, and this factor on the denominator is negative, and the negative negatives make those positive again, so we're up here. Right? When I get to the other side of negative 3, this suddenly becomes negative, now that's negative, this is negative, this is negative, everything's negative, so you're down here, three negatives multiply together, and then you've got that horizontal asymptote to approach. And still, everything's negative, so I'm approaching it from underneath. Um, so I haven't done any calculus here, but I have a pretty good idea what the graph looks like. Okay. Um, and as we mix the calculus into it, I'm going to start by saying, what information can I get out of the function? Then I'll move on to say, what information can I get out of the derivative? And then lastly, what information can I get out of the second derivative? And put that all together to, to smooth things out here. There's some things that the derivative and the second derivative will help me here in, in getting a better idea what this graph actually looks like. But, but I got a pretty good idea just from this. Okay. There you go.